Hi there, good evening, and welcome to story time. It's Thursday evening, it's our final story time of the week. And um, yes, look, I haven't lit the fire tonight. My goodness, what is going on in here, you ask? Well, um, yeah, I've just come from another meeting that I've had in school with, well, not in school, on the, um, the laptop there with parents. So if you were joining me for that one and you're now joining me again, you poor souls, I have pity uh, on you. Um, if you weren't able to join the meeting, the catch-up meeting with, about home learning, then we'll see if we can make it, the recording of it available uh, so that you're able to, to catch up with what we were talking about. So good evening. Welcome. How's your day been? I hope it's been good. And uh, it's been a very busy, I've had a very busy day today. At one point I didn't even know which day it was. Um, I've got a story that I'm going to be sharing to you, with you tonight. As you can see, it's a story about an elephant. But before we do that, I just want to share. This is the most wonderful. Have you ever seen this book before? Um, parents, this is a, what, a beautiful book They're called The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse. And it literally is It's a book filled with beautiful artwork. And um, do you know the thing I love about this book? By Charlie Maxey is you can open it at any page, any, and I literally mean that, look, any page, so there are no markers in any page. I'm going to open it at this page here, and there are just words of wisdom. Listen to this. I've discovered something better than cake. So the story, basically, just to put this into context, is a boy and a mole and a fox and a horse meet each other, and they can talk to each other. Because, of course, it's a story, so they can. And um, the boy needs to find his way home. So they go on a journey. And all the way through the journey, they share their collective wisdom. Just listen to this. this is, so this is the page I've opened up as. I've discovered something better than cake. No, you haven't, said the boy. I have, replied the mole. What is it? said the boy. A hug. It lasts longer. You see, every page in the book has some wisdom in it. And do you know the coincidence about this book? This purely was coincidence. My um, my sister posted on Facebook today a link to... Did you know that today is National Hug Day? There you are. A hug lasts longer than cake. Amazing coincidence. There we are. And um, so shall we open another page and find out... Yeah, let's open another page and see if we can find any wisdom. So, look, there's a picture there. Can you see that picture? And it looks like a teacup stain on it. And the boy says, is it the moon? Asked the boy. It's a teacup stain, said the mole. And where there's tea, there's cake, because the mole likes cake. So there we go. Beautiful book, wonderful book. It, honestly, if you have a moment when you're feeling a little bit low and you want to lift your spirits, you can pick this up, read any page, and it's great. So wonderful. Right, lovely to see people joining us this evening. Thank you. Well, shall we just make sure our, round, our, um, our sound effects are working? First of all, I want to say a big thank you to everybody who has been doing well with the home learning today. Um, I've seen some great examples of work and I've been hearing from teachers as well that uh, people have been working on either the paper packs, on seesaw, on tapestry and it just is a wonderful thing. Not as good as being at school, we all want to get back together uh, as soon as we can but uh, you really are making an effort boys and girls to uh, keep up with the work that you've been set by uh, your teacher. So I think this evening, this Thursday evening for our last story time of the week, you deserve this. In fact, you deserve one of these. Yeah, I love that sound. I've told you that before. Um, so what's our story tonight? Well, you might remember during the last lockdown, we had several stories about elephants. And we have another new story tonight about an elephant. Can you remember the story called Giraffes Can't Dance? I know Mrs Murray knows that story because Mrs Murray is um, has 
several versions of that story. The big book in uh, in the nursery. There's a little sticker there. Giraffes can't dance. And this book here tonight is called Elephant Me. And there's a link between this story tonight and our message of the week. Our message of the week being, can you remember? We showed, shared it with everybody on Monday. It's about words. Hmm. Can you remember what it was? I try to use words that make the world a better place. And there's an, some examples on that statement like please. That's the sign language for please. And did you know what the sign language for thank you is? And the sign language for sorry? On your heart. Sorry. And this story is about words that uh, also make the world a better place. Because this story is a wonderful story and you are going to enjoy it once we've done it. Uh, right, here we go. Elephant Me, it's called. Shall I read the blurb? It says, it's time for the elephant games. Who knew elephants had games? They're probably still allowed to have games at the moment. One by one, the young elephants compete to impress King Elephant Mighty. All except little Num Num. Will he ever discover his own special talent? A joyful celebration of being you from the creator of the best-selling classic, Giraffes Can't Dance. Well, let's find out about Little Num Num. Okay. If you can see the picture there, there is Elephant Mighty, who's the king of the elephants, as all the little elephants gathered around him. There he is, sitting on his throne, lording it over everybody waiting to be entertained. Elephant Mighty reclined on his throne at the start of the elephant games. Impress me, he said to the little ones there, and I'll give you your elephant names. Tradition dictated in elephant lore that all of the young ones compete to try to be better than everyone else at a certain spectacular feat. And look at the pictures of what the elephants are trying to do there. Some gymnastics and some balancing on one leg and some... Look at that one there. Walking on stilts. Have you ever seen an elephant walking on stilts? And each time an elephant managed to prove a talent or skill to the king, the monarch, that's the king, the elephant, would give him his elephant name and honour they all longed to win. Nina was first to try out for a name, the largest young elephant there. She pulled a whole tree from the ground by its roots and lifted it high in the air. Amazing, cried Elephant Mighty. Hurrah! Your trunk is so splendid and long. I never imagined that tree would come loose. I'm calling you Elephant Strong. Young Norcus was next, so he took a deep breath and summoning all of his might, he let out a bellow so loud and so shrill that even the vultures took flight. Right, shall we try it? Shall we try it? Come on, it's Thursday night. It's the last story night of the week. Let's get our elephant trunks and we're going to let out the biggest bellow we can. So after three, after three, we're going to fill our lungs, 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 lungs. We're going to fill our lungs and then give the biggest elephant bellow we can. Here we go. One, two, three. I think he might have disturbed the neighbors. Remarkable, Elephant Mighty declared. That sound, it could set off a riot. I'm calling you Elephant Noisy, my boy. Now shush, settle down and be quiet. One by one, all the young elephants came and showed off the things they could do. And each was awarded its elephant name, except one at the back of the queue. Can you see that little one? What's going to happen to that? I see one more elephant hiding away. Come show yourself now, said the king. Yes, 
Tell me what marvellous trick you can do. Please demonstrate. What's your thing? I'm not really sure yet, Your Highness, he said. It's just that I don't really know. Oh, nonsense, said Elephant Mighty. What tosh! Get on with it. Give me a show. Oh, look at the poor little elephant. How must it be feeling? So Num Num stepped forward and did a few tricks. He was trying as hard as he could. Look, he's trying to pick up a rock. Where is he? There he is there. Trying to pick up a rock, trying to do some gymnastics. But Elephant Mighty was most unimpressed, asking, Can't you do anything good? Oh dear, scowled the king. No, that really won't do. Poor Num Num felt hopelessly small. I should call you Elephant Nothing, he laughed. Yes, Elephant Nothing at all. So Num Num decided to move far away to a place where no elephants go. He trudged through the dust and the heat of the plains, his head and his tail hanging low. But soon, because Num Num was gentle and kind and was blessed with a generous soul, lions and zebra, giraffes and gazelle came and shared his new watering hole. There you are. Making some new friends there. Then one day, a warthog asked, Why are you here? So Num Num explained what occurred. That's nonsense, a crocodile swiftly replied, and his friends all agreed, that's absurd. You're good at all sorts of things. Really, you are. You're friendly, you're kind, and you're true. Out of all the animals here on these plains, there's only one, only one you. Come follow me, Num Num, the crocodile said. Let's take you back where you belong and tell Mr Elephant Thingy-me-jig that he's not only foolish, he's wrong. The animals led Num Num back to his home where Elephant Mighty held sway. Look, that's them marching across the desert there to go and see the Elephant King. There's going to be a showdown. Excuse me, Your Highness. Look, there's Num Num standing in front of the king. Oh, goodness, how's it going to go? Excuse me, your highness, said Num Num. It's me, and this time I've got something to say. He cleared his throat nervously. <coughs> <coughs> Took a deep breath, then looked up, as brave as can be. I'll tell you my elephant name, Num Num said. I want to be... Elephant me! You want to be elephant me? sneered the king with a haughty and arrogant snort. There's nothing about it that says what you do. That's a really ridiculous thought. It's not, Num Num said, because that's who I am. I may not be noisy or tough. But the hardest thing sometimes is just to be you and to know being you is enough. To all of the creatures, astonished surprise, the king didn't bellow or shout. No, Elephant Mighty had started to weep and a long lonely wail came out. <laughs> Sorry. Right, cried the monarch. It's hard to be you. And guess what? It's hard to be me. I'm tired of being elephant mighty all day. I want to be elephant free. I'm longing to do all these things that I can't, that a king's not expected to do, like dancing all night, 
beneath only the stars, with my feet getting wet in the dew. Who cares about all these ridiculous names? No, what's more important by far is just to be true to ourselves every day and content with whoever we are. That's a very good message, isn't it? The story goes on. Elephant me, what a wonderful thing. Now whenever we see there's a chance, let's celebrate meanness with all of our hearts. And right now, I see stars, so let's dance. Oh, wonderful story. Did you enjoy that? I love that story. It's the first time you shared that on, uh, on our story time. But thank you to Guy Parker Reeson, to Giles Andre for writing that story. I hope you enjoyed it. This is our last story time for the week. So tomorrow afternoon at half past one, we want you all logged on. We're going to send your parents the Zoom uh, connection to join us for Well Done Assembly. We'll link in with our bubbles from school and we want as many people to join us for that half past one. It's a way of connecting together at the end of the week just to say well done to everybody for all your hard work during the remote learning. And uh, that's how we'll finish the week. Next week, we'll have Monday morning collective worship, half past nine. Everybody will be welcome to that as well. Lots of people joined. It's, it's been one of the highlights of my week this week, seeing all your little faces on camera as we were doing our collective worship. We'll have story time back next Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Thanks for joining us this evening. So before we finish, let's just pause for a moment to say thank you to God for those that we love, those who are around us, those who are our friends and our family. And although it's National Hug Day and we can't give lots of the people that we love a hug, let's just say thank you to God for them. So we'll say together our night prayer. God our Father, I come to say thank you for your love today. Thank you for my family and all the friends you give to me. Guard me in the dark of night, and in the morning send your light. Amen. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Stay safe. See you tomorrow at Well Done Assembly if you're able to join us. And if not, join us next week for some of the things that we've got planned. Thanks. Bye.